Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to get into what is going to be part 9 of the C70 restoration series, where we have to rebuild the starter on the motor for whoa, the whoa, C70. Whoa, 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 hold on. We already started filming part 9, didn't we? Yeah, like almost a year ago now. Last year, April 2021. Took the wheels apart, ordered all new brake pads, ordered all new bearings. We even started editing it. There's like 23 minutes worth of a video edited together already for us. They didn't need to know that. You at least owe it to your loyal audience to explain to them as to why it's taking so long to get any more new footage for the C70 project. Do I though? Of course you do. Fine. Cameraman is right. It's been a while. Uh, actually did start recording part 9 of the C70 series and it was essentially going to be the wheel rebuild. So I had taken the wheels apart, ordered new tires, new brakes, new bearings. Uh, then in a recent video, uh, actually re or did up my own nickel plating solutions. I was going to clean up the spokes and re-nickel plate those myself. Uh, wasn't getting the results I wanted, so I said it, and I ordered all new spokes and two brand new rims. So while we're waiting for that stuff to get here from the other side of the earth, I figured it would be a great opportunity to rebuild the starter on the motor. And you know, in one of the previous videos, uh, the brush housing and all that was completely corroded to hell and was not working correctly. So let's get that starter rebuilt, fire up the motor once again to have a little listen to it pop off, and then hopefully by the time this is shot and edited, we'll have some uh, wheels to build up. So. Let's get into it. So to start off, just quickly, I want to give you guys a close-up on the part numbers for these parts. As I mentioned, I bought all this stuff pretty much a year ago now. So for the set of brushes, because this thing actually has four brushes in it. So for the separate brushes, the part number is 31201-KG7-000. And... For the actual brush housing assembly, this little do flicky here on the one that's on the bike that's completely rotted away, we've got 31206-MM5-008. So let's go ahead and pull the starter off this motor again, get it apart, and get these new pieces in. So to pop the starter off to the point where we can work on it, uh, there are three 10 mil bolts on this side, but you don't need to take those off. All we need to do is back these two screws off, one here and one here. And once we back those out, we can pull the starter off. So we'll back this side off, back this side off, and now that starter should come right away, no problem. Let's get the rest of the screws out here. That screw is loose, and that screw is loose. And there is our starter. There we go. So now let's get the motor in the way. We'll pop this apart, and we'll have a look at that old brush assembly again, and we'll look at getting it replaced. So there's our Mitsuba SM8101 6 volt 0.2 kilowatt starter removed off the motor. Let's go ahead and get the motor out of the way now, so we can break this down and replace those parts that need replacing. So I just shot a bit of me pulling this off. Look, I almost dumped those out. Jesus, but uh, the light was kind of shitty. So I just turn up the ISO a bunch so we get a bit brighter here. Um, so here is our brush plate, the new one. And here's our two new brushes. Here's the old one. So this old one gets mounted inside and it's this nut here, or this bolt here mounted from the inside that holds that on the inside of the case of starter. Those two brushes come up through on this side here where this black wire is and this one here. Now to get this out I need to cut these two wires, pull that off, then I can take out this piece here, get that in, route the uh, brushes out through, put our new piece on, and then we can button it all up and test it out and see how it's working. So I'm going to get some snips, cut those off, we're going to get this apart.
So now our reassembly is going to be the opposite of what we just did. I had a little bit of frigging around getting this out just because it was a bit tight. Probably hasn't moved since it was put together sometime in 1981. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a brush and just give this little rusty bits a quick brush around. I got a brass brush here to clean that up with. And then what we'll do is we'll get our new inside brushes settled into the channel they belong in. Get that bolted in, make sure our brushes are sticking up out. We'll go ahead and we'll seat our new brush cap on top of that. Once we get our commutator, stator, whatever you want to call it, back down through, we'll button it all back up, we'll hook a battery up, and we'll see how good it spins. So, give that a quick brush, get it back together. So now that we've got that set of brushes installed, the next thing we want to do is put our commutator or stator, whatever you want to call it, back in. Now there looks like to be a couple little burn marks on the copper here, so I'm going to give that a quick go on the brass wire wheel as well and I'll be right back so we can look at that cleaned up. Give me two minutes. Okay, so we gave those a very light quick clean up. We're ready to drop this back down through. Keep in mind this thing in here has extremely strong magnets and it might fight you. That's what it's supposed to do. So I think the next thing we want to want to do is we're probably going to want to pop these springs off because trying to get each of these brushes in against the spring while it's down over this stator, commutator, try to hold that down, get these pushed in is going to be nigh on impossible. So I'm pretty sure the way you're supposed to do this is pop these springs off, put all the brushes in place, then you can slide it on and then we put the springs back in and then let the springs keep the tension against the commutator, stator, whatever you want to call this thing. I call it whatever. So one thing I want to touch on briefly is when you look at this plate, it has little tabs. See this little tab in here, little tab in here, little tab in here. Those three guys, they're about 120 degrees out from one another. They just sit on the inside lip of the starter casing. Right here, there's a little small guy that actually fits into a little groove here. So this is a very fiddly process to get it together. You just saw me put it together and so I was pushing this down, holding over one side and the other way giving it a little crank one way or the other. That's all well and good. But that was the second time I did it because the first time I did it, I didn't have my little tab lined up correctly. It was 180 degrees out. So learn from my mistake. Make sure you're double checking where the smaller tab is so it's that it's lined up with this little gap in the housing here. So the trick I just figured out for getting these little springs on is as follows. I went ahead and I got a small screwdriver bit and this essentially will fit in where that little flat area is, like so. So I can get in there and twist that spring. So what I can do is I can put the spring in place such that the round end is pressing on the back 
of that brush, I can put my little bit in to where the actual spring end is, twist it, and then pop it down over and then pull my bit out. So now here we go, I can push that the rest of the way on. And we've got good spring tension sitting on that brush, holding that commutator in place. So I'm gonna repeat the same process now for the other three springs, and we should be good to put some power to this once to get it back together. So there we have it, if we do a quick little rotation around, you'll see here's our spring mounted and the little tab comes out and presses on the back of that brush, keeping the brush tight against the commutator. So now, you know, when we put some power to that stuff, we should get some uh, rotation happening. So one thing I'm noticing here is, if you look at this closely, I've got the rubber O-ring held up tight against the bottom side of this. And you can see this old O-ring is after stretching out a bunch. Uh, one trick you can do with this, and since this is not really like a high pressure system where it might be stuff like rainwater is the worst thing that might be able to get into this. Get you back in focus here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little slit in this and cut out a small section. With that small section cut out, I can then super glue this back together to the right di diameter and it should fit properly. So one thing I'm going to mention about this process, obviously this is a destructive process. We are going to cut O-rings and resize them to fit. Do this at your own risk. I'm willing to take this risk. If I mess it up, then hey, I'm out another couple weeks before I can shoot a video because I'm going to go find some new O-rings. Uh, but I'm pretty confident I can make a slit, put this on, size it, mark it, and then cut it so that it fits and I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. So. That all being said, get yourself a nice new razor blade, nice and sharp. I'm going to take these rubber gloves off so I can get some more accuracy going here. And also make sure you got yourself some good cyanoacrylate based super glue. So this is the stuff I use. I actually use this stuff when I'm doing like pool cue tips and stuff as well. But uh, yeah, so here we go. Commit, commit, commit. So there's our O-ring cut, we slide our O-ring back in place, I'm going to hold it on there relatively tight, have a little look. Now I want to make sure there's no real tension on this join after I glue it back together so I might do a couple cuts here to make sure I'm not going to mess anything up. Looks like about right here will be good, I'll put a little cut there so you can see where I'm cutting to, make sure we make a nice straight cut. Put our O-ring back in place, push the two ends together. I see I've still got a bit more room to work with. I can probably take off another, looks like about a millimeter. Lay this out again. Nice straight cut. Cut off about two or three millimeters. So I can wrap this back around once more. Get a text message. And we have a look here. We can see that'll fit just nice now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue that on the body of the starter. So what I'll do is I'll put a bit of glue on either side there. I'll just push them together and I'll hold them for about a minute until they. Uh, stick together well and we'll go ahead and flip it around and do the other side as well. So, gluing time. So 
So here's our fixed up O-rings. We've got a join here next to my finger. And we've got a join right here. So now those are nice and snug around the circumference of the housing. So now I'm ready to put the end cap on, get all our spacers in place, and then get this mounted back to the motor. So I'm going to give this a few minutes to cure a bit longer, just so I know it's good and cured. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get this put back on the motor. Just one more quick look at how that uh, seal came out. So the joint is a bit right here. You can see it's fitting nice and snug around now and it's not gonna have any big gaps to let water in. It should be the same on this side. So I'm gonna pull the motor over now. We're gonna get this mounted back to the motor. We can finally run six volts through it and see if it's gonna spin the motor over properly or not. So let's have a look. This is the current state of my neutral safety switch. As you can see, it's kind of busted. Now I've got a spare one there. I just can't recall where it is right now and I have to go poke around through a few bags to get it. But in the interim, I can test it out as follows. We've got the wiring harness all hooked up, but all I really need is positive through the starter relay and on over to the starter. So that's this connection here. And I've got the battery grounded from the negative terminal just against one of the screws here at the body. So if I go ahead and short, pretending this is the starter switch, you can hear that the starter is actually turning the motor over now. If I put my hand here next to where the plug is out, I should feel that blowing up against my hand. And there's all kinds of puffs here. So now the next thing we can do is fire this up using the starter. Okay, so what we got here is batteries hooked up, goes through to the starter so you can get it to turn over. When I've got my coil hooked up, things are grounded properly on the side of the motor over here. A little grounding wire here. This is totally occluded right now. I got enough gas in the uh, tube here now in the gas line to fill up the, uh, fill up the bowl of the carburetor. I did this carburetor, it's been a couple of years, but uh, it, uh, it might need to be done again before we do like the final go on this bike. But I'm going to get a bit of quick start in here anyways. Put that in there. We can cross the terminals on the starter here. And this thing should pop maybe, we'll see how it goes. Let's see. So we're going to call it there, motor popped off via the electric starter and that was the key takeaway for this video, getting that starter working again to the point where it would start our motor. Again, sincerest apologies for the delay on the C70 project. I've just been doing a bunch of other shit. Uh, so, anyways, we've got our shutter rebuilt, motor still runs, hooray. Uh, part 10 is going to be a wheel rebuild. Rims and spokes are on the way. They should get here within a couple weeks' time, fingers crossed. And once they do, I'll get that video together for you guys, and you guys can continue along the journey with me restoring this old C70. So, 
Once again, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.